Hey everybody, it's Jim Cummings. I'm here with my first guest, Danny Madden. Danny has a movie that is coming out on the 4th of May, but it is available in digital theaters right now. It is called Beast Beast. It was at Sundance 2020. It is quite good. It also stars Danny's younger brother, Will Madden, who you might recognize from playing Paul Carnery in The Wolf of Snow Hollow. Danny and I both got vaccinated, and people five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now might think, well, that's crazy that it was so difficult to get a COVID vaccine. And then 50 years from now, they might also be saying, who the fuck is Danny Madden? <laughs> so Danny, who the fuck are you? Yeah, I'm a, a filmmaker buddy of Jim's. We've been doing this kind of thing together for over 10 years, closer to 15. But I don't know, what have we done? Have we produced each other's stuff, our department? So I started out as a directing student at Emerson with Danny. We had some good sibling rivalry and some friendly competition at local school film festivals. Mm -hmm. And then I started producing for Danny when he was doing live action shorts and features and animations. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of tag teamed projects and yeah. made stuff together. Ooh, this is weird. Okay. Isn't it weird? It's gonna get a little weirder if I'm holding it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> So we were down in Austin making this movie, Thunder Road, and it's like, you know what? This is this is it. This is this kind of crew. This is this kind of size. Like, you know, this is what it looks like to make that first feature in, in this way. And so that was our decision to kind of go go from there and see if we could put it together and write a good enough script and gather the troops. I wanted to talk to you about uh, camaraderie and uh, team building and filmmaking with your friends mm -hmm. because so often when we have the short to feature lab or when people are making movies around us it's very difficult for me to explain how we make it of like you make a movie i get jealous i work really hard i make a movie you i get, get jealous. jealous it's my turn and i go what the f why would yeah. why would this why, festival want this jim's movie stupid movie I'm <laughs> i could do better than that but it is interesting where like so many times when we were co-editing mm -hmm. there were times where you would literally teach me something in real time by pressing a few buttons on the keyboard and i learned that over your shoulder mm -hmm. and so often especially now with covid kids aren't going to have that relationship yep. I feel like we have the same group of people that we've been making movies with for the last 10 years sometimes mm -hmm. um, and how other people can do that what do you attribute that to a lot of times if you're just on a directing track you on a track like that you get kind of just keep going in that direction and you don't you never look to the sides you never look behind you you, you don't you're not stepping on other people's sets you know you're looking you're kind of just doing that so so I, that's an argument for me for playing in different departments, you know? That was me helping you edit this movie that you directed, you know? And I was on set for that, operating the camera, and I was doing this. And it's like, in that way, that kind of sharing is really important, you know? Doing sound design on Thunder Road and, and approaching it purely from a sound right. uh, perspective when it comes to post-production. So for you, I mean, so much of your films are so sound savvy. Like, there's so much sound focus in your movies. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ever listen to me? <laughs> what got you so into sound? Was it because you have a face for radio? <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to record everything on set with great sound and then you'll mm -hmm. stay around a location and also record other sounds yeah. that are there yeah. while you're in the same space mm -hmm. to make the sound effects sound realistic. Or if you need kind of like footsteps running out of the party in Beast Beast, we wanted to do a bunch of variations of okay now like no no voices and we had all our extras there and it's a fun way to end the night even but now it's like okay now pretend like you're running and this is just your voices you're editing the picture but then you're also doing stuff to the sound as well to make the best movie possible mm -hmm. instead of just making the best movie and then changing the sound and making it work like right, right. you edit with sound yeah, sound well. is not like something to like tag on the end for me you know or it should shouldn't be for anyone that that's very much how a lot of people like treat it like it's like or like color correction it's like oh yeah we'll just we'll finish the movie and then we'll just color it real fast and then it can be such a it can be such a tool in so many ways you know when you're storyboarding like okay what is this shot do we even need that shot no we can do that off screen with sound or like if you're trying to save money and you want to do a party scene like you put the sound of a hundred people in the next room you know while your character's right you know you, you can like you can actually kind of expand what the story is doing by what you're hearing and, yeah. and we don't even 
we don't even think about it in our in our normal lives how much information we're getting at all times. Just but we're audio. always thinking about what we're seeing, you know. If you crack that open and, and like appreciate that as its own art form, you can run that all the way through what the story is and what you're trying to do with it. And it's just as meaningful as any other art that goes into movie making. It, it's, it's as important to approach sound in the same way you would approach casting. And then over the years, working in animation, you're, you're compiling, you're putting together, and you're starting from a place of absolute silence. Right. So then you start to realize, oh, what does it mean to have a car drive by in the background or, you know, a little bit of this sound? You don't get you don't get anything for free, you know? So then it's like every little thing, any foley hit, any footstep has meaning and you're building it like like you would in a screenplay yeah. or something. You're building from from a blank page. How did you do Beast Beast? Beast Beast started with a short film called Krista. It was shot in a in a high school here in a in cast from the drama department. We found Shirley Chen, who's just like amazing young talent. She was a junior at the time. So yeah, so then Krista played South by Southwest. It played at South by Southwest. You won two awards that night for yeah, the short okay, film. Yeah, yeah. The short film is gonna go live on Vimeo the next day. Yeah. And so in order to capitalize off of how many people were gonna be seeing it at that time, you stayed up all night to to launch the Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. The Kickstarter video is gnarly. It's actually like footage of Danny staying up and there's like a little ticker at the bottom of a clock of how late he stayed up to edit this video. It was a team effort. We all we were all so kind of jazzed in the way that our team kind of celebrates is like, let's start the next thing. And then you raised some money through the Kickstarter. Yep. We to, called it we called it pre-production funds. And then Casey Bader saw mm -hmm. the Kickstarter and also the short. Saw the film, yeah. On, on saw the Vimeo. short on Vimeo. Casey Bader is Alec Baldwin's producing partner. So Casey then signs on to the project. Alex signs on. They came in just in time to kind of round off the last bit that I we see. needed. You shot in your hometown. Mm -hmm. You shot in your home, your childhood home, Mom, childhood house. bedroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's something that like I always tell people that you can make. I mean, Krisha taught that to me. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a big a big deal for me. It got me off the couch to go and do stuff. But I think that's a really important lesson that like if you have access to a home you can kind of shoot something there and it's there's no reason why it's disqualified yeah. from being a feature film. We definitely wedged our way in there. We were like, hey, mom and dad, like we're going to come back to feature Oh, it'd be great to see you and work on the thing. Cool. I, we're having trouble finding this main location, just this one, you know, Will's character lives there and there's some like, there's some pyrotechnics that happen in the kitchen, but maybe, you know, and just like slowly wedged our way into them saying like, yeah, yeah, this would be a good idea. And we actually bartered four days of filming at the school for some classes after we wrapped my brother and I went and taught classes at the middle school and the high school oh, okay great and it, in exchange it's just really exciting for me as a buddy of yours I've known you mm -hmm. for 16 years which is wow. crazy yeah um that like you're making movies I'm making movies and it's strange to think that like there are people who don't have a community in Des Moines yeah. and yeah. we happened to meet each other because we were in school together yeah and we liked each other enough to be, want to work together yeah um What's your advice to people for how to get to where you are now, a Sundance mm -hmm. feature filmmaker, and what do you attribute your success yeah. to, and how can other people emulate that? Just kind of like experimenting with all these things and like kind of building your toolkit out so that when it comes time to, to like lean in and commit to the feature, you kind of have all, these, uh, all this experience and all this stuff, and then you can kind of put enough of the textures and layers into that feature that will hopefully make it feel full. By doing many, many short films, you start to learn how you speak the language of movies, yep. and you feel so much more confident. And I, I realized, like, only after making my first feature, how little confidence I had, how and and how that was really the huge hurdle to get over. That you just have mm -hmm. to start doing it. You don't necessarily feel that timidity until you see it in yourself afterwards. Along with that process, you you learn. <laughs> how, in which ways you're prone to fucking up. I think that's another thing that I have with Danny. Danny and I make fun of movies a lot. I think especially mm. nowadays, it's harder to get honest responses about your artwork, and it's so important mm. to not pull punches. We're yeah. like, I wrote a couple of jokes and I made fun of you walking up the hill, and it's a funny thing, but having that relationship I find to be incredibly valuable yeah. and will only encourage us to become more ambitious yeah. and have higher ceilings of our movies. We find feedback screenings to be really helpful, at least definitely sure. with Beast Beast. Like, to, all right, give me the dirt, you know? Or even at a feedback screen, people are very very nice and they go right into, oh, I really like this, I really like that. And I'm like, cool, thanks guys. Like, thank you for that. Let's just like, cut out all compliments yeah. and now let's talk about what could be better. 
or, or what is terrible or what I think that's another thing like I try to court that <clears throat> thing of like making sure that it's not yes men that I if I it's nice to have yes men to say oh yeah your movie's great I wouldn't change a single thing you're also yeah. very handsome um, and they're <laughs> like, not lying wow. it's really valuable to have people who are honest with you that's something that I appreciate about you is that you court that stuff because if it makes the movie even 1% better that's making it 1% better yeah sometimes it's letting true. other people talk it's <laughs> Don't talk to these this people. This is over. This, <laughs> over. this is over. In conclusion, uh, your movie's coming out. What would you say to anybody who is just starting out in in film, and um, what advice can you give? Uh, I, now I'm, I'm trying to think. I don't want to give the the, the trite the trite stuff. Um, I'm I'm trying to be specific when it comes to uh, what what's advice. What is advice? I don't know. Everyone's in a different place. Um, let it just let it be meaningful to you. I, I think that's a big thing. Is like. I see some people will send me a short film. Hey, I made this thing, and I look at it, and I'm like, "Why? Why'd you make this? What is this? What? Why? Why? Why am I watching this? But did you? Did you like? Let like try and tap into that part of you that needs to say something about this. It's too much work to have it not to do something that's not important. It's too much work for you. It's too much work for all your crew members, everyone who's gonna help on it. You know, um, if it's not important enough to you, then it, you're wasting your own time and everyone else's. You know? That's Danny Madden, everybody. Go, yeah, go check out the movie. Let me know what you think. It's quite good. Even if it's not, let us know. <laughs> or, yeah, or let us know either way. <laughs> <laughs>